Hello, you beautiful people. How are you? Yeah. Wow, no one has a job anymore. That's amazing. Thank you for being here. We are Klein Alley Show. This is K-Rock, and you've entered the greatest place on the planet at this exact moment. So thank you for all coming out. Give yourselves a round of applause. You guys full of pizza and alcohol? We're so happy to do another pizza in the band. We've been doing these for a while now, and they just seem like they get better and better every time. So whether you won from us on the morning show uh, or however you're here, we're happy that you're here. And uh, we've got a great band, obviously, that a lot of people are excited to see. For like the past decade, we haven't seen a lot of yeah, yeah, yeahs because they've been making music and making babies, etc. But they're here to make your Friday epic, so please... We're going to do a little chat, then they're going to play some music. I saw the set list. You will not be disappointed. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick, Brian, Karen O, the Yeah, Yeah, Yes. Welcome, welcome. God, we missed you. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. We had a sad conversation on the phone over the radio a few months back when you had to cancel some dates because uh, Nick uh, was not doing so hot health-wise. I talked to Nick earlier today. I said, how you doing? He said, 90%. I said, my best day, I'm at 40%. So that's huge. That's good. We'll take 90%, Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, this is so exciting because before we get to the new music and obviously all the festivals you're going to be on, and there's quite a few of them, including something happening very close to here in about a week or so, uh, it's, uh, tomorrow's a big anniversary. Maybe the biggest anniversary ever. 20 years since the big debut album. I mean, this is a huge moment. How do you celebrate 20 years from your first ever album that still gave us maps and so many other things? Uh, I, I have my kids, like, uh, like, a birthday party for my, like, one of my friend, like, kids' friends or something. <laughs> No, we had a dinner. We had like a, we we had like an early dinner um, that was really celebratory. Um, uh, Mother Wolf, I think it was. Mother yeah, Wolf. yeah, yeah. They like they like they spoiled us, and uh, we uh, it was like one day into practice, which was probably too early into practice. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. There's no real knowing how to celebrate 20 years, right, Brian? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says rock and roll oh, like uh, an early child. dinner. Right. Like, yeah, like an early or very early dinner. Um, you know, you released a, a video short today, I, I think, like, earlier today, and um, it was something that was shot back in 2003. It was part of your UK tour. A lot of people are just seeing it for the first time. And what is our obsession with the 90s and 2000s? It's like, it's the decades that we are always going to be obsessed with. And it's like, I'm pouring over this video of you guys 20 years ago. Do you feel the same way, having lived it? Yes. No, 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 I don't. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I, I, I still don't really know how to answer this question. It's so abstract, and it was such a, obviously, completely different time, uh, and in a lot of ways, a much more innocent time. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's like we innocent are. Innocent and sleazy, right? Innocent and <laughs> sleazy, exactly. The indie sleaze times. Um, but I, I don't know, like, I still can't really wrap my head around it. We are the same people, but we're also totally different people. It's, and I feel like that's uh, the question you guys get a lot. 20 years, how's the band changed? But I'm more curious about when you watch it, when you think about this album that you know, celebrates 20 years this week, how have Yeah Yeah has remained exactly the same? Because obviously you've changed personal lives, you've done some other things, but was there some sort of a plan you had 20 years ago and you feel like we've stuck to this part of it 100%? We had no plan. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no plan. No, yeah, not only did we have no plan, um, I also, like, I remember around the time we were, like, uh, before we put out Fever to Tell, we were touring with some friends of ours, and I remember being, like, uh, this isn't, like, yeah, like, no, like, um, you know, whatever, like, sh throwing shade, but, like, but I was just, like, uh, our friends who we were, pl we were playing with were, like, a bit older than us, and I was just, like, man, like, I will never be a band for more than 12 years. It's like, no, no, no way. There's no way. And now I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, wow. Like, we're the luckiest band in the world, like, to be around for, like, you know, 23 years. Like, holy. Like, so it's, so my perspective's changed a lot on that. So. Well, if you think about some of the performances, too, yes, from 20 years ago, um, you know, people talk about you being drunk and falling off stage and like all the crazy, you know, instances that you had and the crazy outfits and everything. So how wasted are you now? Um, 
the front row has already signed waivers. <laughs> all of them. Yeah, be honest. How wasted do you think I am? No. <laughs> Close the, close the windows here. It could be any time of day. Yeah. You know, this is like, it's like two in the morning right now. That's right. true. Well, there was a story I think you said one time, like a speaker fell on you during a show, but because you were so drunk, you said that you think that saved your life. It, well, yeah, I think it happened because I was so drunk, and then and then it saved my life because I was so drunk. So I don't know, like which you know which way to go. So. You hear that, kids? Alcohol will save your life. Remember that. That's important to know. Uh, you, you have played a little game of, oh my God, we miss them so much because it's been 10 years since you've been on like a North American tour. You're going to make up for it by hitting a lot of festivals throughout the summer, including uh, right here. And you were nice enough to call us up and give us the big exciting announcement of the Just Like Heaven Festival. So many bands, amazing lineup. And you claim that some of these are your friends for many years, that you, but you haven't been on the road, so you haven't spent a lot of time with them. Is the first move you have to show them updated pictures of your kids when you get together? What do you do? <laughs> I don't have kids. <laughs> then your pictures are great. <laughs> we appreciate guys like you. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think a lot of, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's kind of, what do you think, Brian? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. I think there'll be some of that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we're going to get to catch up with a lot of people we haven't seen in a while. Like, you know, the Walkman especially, who uh, I think we played, like, like, one of our earlier shows with them back at this venue called The Cooler. And um, here we are, like you know, maybe like 22 years later, playing a major festival in the Los Angeles area. So it's super amazing. You know, we were. T I hope you can settle a debate for us because we were talking about some of the more annoying uh, audience members at concerts. And as someone who's played a lot of concerts, and you've got more coming up later this year, who is a worse person at a concert? The person who's recording the entire thing on their phone? or the random drunk dude that's yelling requests at you <laughs> the entire show? Do maps again, we just did it. Do a map! Um. Oh, yeah, we, we had this, we, there was a festival we played last year where this guy was screaming, heads will roll, like the entire show. It was so annoying. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was like from the second song on. Um, so like so, and it had never it happened so before. Um, and so at first I was like, yeah, like okay, yeah. And, then, and, then, and then like like a few few songs that I was like, no, no. It's like I was like, you have to be patient if you want. <laughs> yeah. So um, so anyway, but you know, I get it. <laughs> but I do think the person filming the entire show is way more annoying. Well, and Don't be that person today. If you think Morning. about, too, like, a hundred years from now, like, how music and concerts are changing so, va so, so uh, fast, you know, a hundred years when we're all dead and gone, would you be opposed to a hologram tour of your band? <laughs> like, are you opposed to performing even in death? Um, that's a Brian answer. What do you think, Brian? <laughs> uh, let me think about this for a second. Um, so, what's my response? Well... Um, I suppose, like, you know, like, like a DVD or like, like, like some kind—not a DVD specifically, but like some kind of documentation of the band, you know, like replayed, you know, after our time could be a simulated experience of that, you know, and like, you know, um, you know, some kind of representation of what the band was being, you know, projected as if it was live. Um, so I don't, I don't think that is too dissimilar from what already exists in some ways. Yeah. But it's kind of weird because what's happening now, right, there's all this talk of AI, right, this, uh, this technology where they're able to take your vocals and take all the music you've made over the years and they could actually release a new Yeah Yeah, yeah song right now or a thousand new ones. And some artists are like, F that, and others are like, you know what, uh, it's cool as long as I get a kickback. Uh, are you opposed to the robots doing Yeah Yeah, yeah music currently? Well, I, I think that's, that's the follow-up to, to that question because, like, you know, um, you know, it's one thing if, if we're doing it and there's a documentation of us doing it, but then where's the responsibility of creativity in that? So, if we're like, is the hologram, like, authentic, is authentic if it's generating new ideas, like, on our behalf, you know, or not, you know? We're or not like, smart enough to answer that follow-up. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good no point. No one's you trying to up. impersonate us. Just <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem we have. Um, you know, Karen, one thing that you've said that you, um, you know, as far as advice that you've gotten in your career is that somebody told you to be more of a bitch. Oh, yeah. And how... Allie it, followed that advice, too, I, somehow. <laughs> so I am a huge raging bitch, thanks to you. No, how is that possible for somebody who just seems so naturally nice? And, and then does it carry into other parts of your life where you're like, oh, shit, I was really mean to that manager and I didn't realize it? Um, yeah, no, I think, I think it's just like, um, yeah, uh, that person actually who is, um, 
uh, Dave Siddick, <laughs> who's produced all our records. Um, I think I think he just like I think he just wanted to push me like really a lot in that direction because he knew that I generally would like go the other direction. But um, but like the way that I sort of uh, decoded that was just you know what I've been doing for a while is like you know kind of. Um, stick to your own guns, like, you know, uh, no is, like, the sweetest word. Absence makes the heart the heart grow, grow fonder. That's why you guys are so happy to see us right now. <laughs> cool. um, and, uh, yeah, but just, like, really just, like, um, you know, the most important thing is to just sort of, like, follow, like, what your gut tells you and, um, and you know, and that generally is always going to be, like, I, I never regret, you know, kind of... Um, not being a bitch, but <laughs> but like but but uh, but like sort of yeah, just like healthy boundaries, dudes. You know, so yeah, yeah. The uh, the newer album, which came out uh, less than a year ago, last September, "Cool It Down." You guys are kind of this is your first tour to play those songs in front of people. "Cool It Down." There you go. That's what, show everyone. Don't just don't just That's show right. the band. Show everyone. Uh, this is exciting now. And I know when you guys first started gathering once again in your basement, at one of your basements, I believe, when you started getting together and playing, kind of riffing. You did this album kind of different than the other ones you had done before. How so? I mean, actually, I feel like we did it more in the vein of how we did Fear to Tell in, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, just because it felt like, like with Fever to Tell, it was just like in like my loft or Karen's apartment, just like starting with the most basic things. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, and it kind of felt that way this way too. Like there was just no one, there wasn't like producers around being like, that's an interesting idea. Like, um, <laughs> you know, like, so it was just, it was just us like getting the basics of the things that would, that and which we hadn't done since Fever to Tell. Um, that was really interesting. And what else? Yeah, it was like all like home studios. So like it just that's felt true. like very homegrown in a funny way. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I know with Fever to Tell, you explain that, um, you know, a lot of that album was a release at, after 9-11, right? I mean, there was a lot of raw emotion there. Did you kind of feel that way with Cool It Down in the sense of COVID had just happened? We had just gotten out of a, a national, you know, worldwide pandemic and was some of the album inspired through that? Yeah, there was just a, there were there's like a real parallel because like you know um, yeah the birth of the band was like through this like very you know traumatic moment for both New York City where we were living and the world, um, and then um, that's how we were kind of born into the world you know, and so we were like very kind of accustomed to just like the super high stakes you know like there may be no tomorrow kind of like you know um, all or nothing you know it's I mean it's just so it's actually quite good material to work with. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, and then, yeah, like almost 20 years later, uh, the pandemic and um, a lot of the same similar feelings. So like, so it was like, you know, it felt like kind of a parallel and like, and, and again, just super inspiring and really good material. So like, even though we were away for like nine years, you know, it felt like the perfect, you know, you know, moment to come back and like, and, and just like pour our hearts out and just like, and it felt familiar, like, as you say, it just felt like almost like a full circle and um, not one that we would have wished for, but like at the same time, like, you know, uh, music has been a lifeline, like for everybody, I'm sure in this room, you know, and like, um, and so music, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> as you're about to head out on the road again to go to all these tours, starting uh, right here in a few uh, weeks for the Just Like Heaven Fest, you can see them again. Who's planning on going to that, by the way? We'll see them all again. Uh, now that you're back on the road, when you stop at the gas station and one of you runs in and goes, hey, what do you guys want? I'm getting snacks. What is your go-to gas station snack? We'll start with Brian. We'll make our way down. Um, uh, Nature Valley oat and honey. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's my solid choice, too. Oh, oh my God. Responsible snack. Reliable. Sir. Good job. Karen, what say you? Uh, yeah, probably Cool Ranch Doritos. Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> Nick? Uh, sh Man, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Red Bull? Red Bull. We will accept that. All right. Let's get to you guys ready for some songs? All right. Once again, give it up for Nick, Brian, Karen, the AAS. See you in a day. Thank you.
this is burning. Wasif on the acoustic guitar.
We got one more song for you tonight. for us. We're back. We love you. Thank you, K-Rock, for having us. The sincerest gratitude, we love you. And good afternoon, good night, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> <laughs> 